Harper, and only an hour to do it in. Carl Belisaire, please. Uh, do you agree with David Cameron that multicultural, multiculturalism in the UK has failed? This is the speech that David Cameron made this week, where he talked about the doctrine of state multiculturalism that had encouraged different cultures to live separate lives. We failed to provide a vision of society to which they feel they want to belong. We've even tolerated segregated communities behaving in ways that run completely counter to our values. Douglas Murray. Yes, I think he was right. Um, and I think we should start this by just reminding ourselves what multiculturalism is not. Multiculturalism is not multiracialism. It isn't pluralism. Uh, for years, the multicultural policy has been able to glide along in part because of that misunderstanding. Because of the misunderstanding that when you talk about multiculturalism as a policy, what you're talking about is solely immigration or multiracialism or so on. Uh, it's allowed itself an incredible uh, easy ride, not least by the fact that this confusion has meant that any critic of multiculturalism has been immediately decried for years now as a racist. What of do some you understand kind. by multiculturalism? Multiculturalism in the way as a that David policy. As a policy, multiculturalism is the following: it is the idea that there is effectively no such thing as British society or British culture. There are simply different communities which you're born into. If, for instance, you're born into a community from an Asian background, you will be treated by government throughout your life as a member of the Asian community. If you're born into some other uh, a racial or, or religious grouping, you'll be regarded in that way. And that anything in that group could be different from what the norm in society goes on. Let me give one quick, quick example I gave in, in a, an article yesterday in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, it's, it's been quite commonly known in recent years, for instance, that girls of Pakistani origin have, at the age of 16, been taken out of British schools and married to older men. Now, if a white girl of 16 over recent decades had been married against her will to some randy old pervert who wanted to have his way with her, the state would have stepped in. It would have rightly said that that was an outrage. But, lo and behold, 16-year-old girls of Asian origin disappearing from their schools, nobody wanted to mention it because it could be thought to be racist. Right. The idea was that there are different values for different people in society, and there is nothing more divisive than that, and I'm glad that David Cameron has called time on it. So once again, Douglas Murray places his, the hammer straight squarely on the nail. This is an epidemic situation, epidemic problem that is still occurring in England today. Girls under the age of 16, probably even as young as perhaps sometimes 11 and 12 year old, within the Pakistani community, within the Asian community, are being taken out of schools, whisked off, and married, whether it's in Great Britain, to older, older men within that society, within that cultural space, in that area where no one's reporting it or it does get reported, and that's how we find out about it when some of these girls escape or perhaps some family members, okay, say something at the risk of peril to themselves or they're sent back to Pakistan or to the Asian continent to get married to elderly men. So what I want to do before we go further and hear Mehdi Hassan's response, I want you to see Mehdi Hassan's response while Douglas Murray was talking. There are two th spots within 15, 20 seconds where he's just looking aghast as if this is the first time he's hearing about it when he knows damn full well, Mehdi Hassan knows damn full well that this is something that is occurring and it is absolutely despicable and disgusting within the Pakistani Muslim community, within the Asian community in Great Britain, the underage marriage of girls against their legal consent. So let's go back to that clip real quick. But before we do so, you're watching the Dr. Nasser Sheikh Show, and we welcome everybody. Thank you all for joining in. I'm your host, Dr. Nasser, where I give you my political prescription from my political perspe perspective of what happens when you get science when you get social media, religion, policy, culture, and the media, and they all basically just collide. So let's go with that clip. We'll do it right now. Girls of Pakistani origin have, at the age of 16, been taken out of British schools and married to older men. Now, if a white girl of 16 over recent decades had been married against her will, to some randy old pervert 
who wanted to have his way with her, the state would have stepped in. It would have rightly said that that was an outrage. There you go. Check that out right there. He's like looking at Douglas Murray going, what? What are you talking about? Check out his other reaction that's going to come up in a few seconds as well. But, lo and behold, 16-year-old girls of Asian origin disappearing from their schools, nobody wants... And there you see it again. And see the earlobe? If you talk to people with body language, okay, when they talk to earlobe, that's like, oh, direct hit. Okay, I don't want to hear this anymore because it's the truth. And that's exactly what's going on right here, folks. Exactly what's going on right here. Anyways, let's now hear the response from Mehdi Hassan to Douglas Murray. We're going to do that with the next clip. Different, different values different values for different people in society. Well, and it's um, time to in answer time. to the question, I think he's wrong. I don't agree with Douglas's definition uh, at all. Um, I believe, I'm, I believe I'm a product of multiculturalism, not just multiracialism. Uh, my father came to this country in 1966. He used to write lots of letters to newspapers with his views on the stories of the day, and he used to get dog litter through his uh, letterbox in response. Uh, that 45 years later, in my view, 45 years later, his son can sit here on Question Time with David Dimbleby and a Conservative minister and say that I'm a proud Briton and a proud Asian and a proud Muslim, I think is a testimony to the success of multiculturalism in this country, which is definitely not... And, and, and I'm, I'm just on, on Douglas's point. On Douglas's point about anyone who goes against multiculturalism is regarded as a racist. Uh, a, that's not true. But B, let's look at the reaction to David Cameron's speech. Uh, Nick Griffin said it was a provocative speech. When Nick Griffin says your speech is provocative, you know you're in trouble. The daughter of the leader, the daughter of the leader of the French National Front, Jean-Marie Le Pen, said she wanted to congratulate David Cameron on his speech. And the leader of the EDL in Luton said he's saying what we're saying. He knows what his base is saying. So when I hear reactions like that, I do worry about such speech. Well, what do you think he was getting at? What was he trying to say? Do you think he was, he was speaking in a way that he intended to appeal? I think he did, I think, the, and it's sad because, BNP? look, I'm quite critical of David Cameron, but in 2007 he wrote an article in The Observer in which he said we can't bully people into Britishness, we have to inspire them, integration is a two-way street, it's not just about immigrant communities, it's about all of us, and that David Cameron disappeared. Four years right. later he turns up in Munich, right. of all places, to tell us oh, that we need this muscular <laughs> liberalism and to talk like Douglas about forced marriages. Sorry, how many people have forced marriages in this country? And show me which cultural group defends forced marriages and which government defends forced marriages. I've yet to come across a single one. So just a quick few points in response to Mehdi Hassan. Number one, where he says, I'm a product of multiculturalism. Look at me. I'm here on the podium with Douglas Murray and a conservative minister. And I'm a proud Asian. I'm a proud Muslim. I'm a proud Briton. That may be fine. You're probably one of the few exceptions to that thing, but that has nothing to do with you being a product of multiculturalism. That just has a product of you integrating within British society. And you know what? Keeping some of your values, keeping some of your culture but also mixing it in with British culture and becoming a part of British society, which is that I don't think it has anything to do with multiculturalism. Then the fact about we're multiculturalists or people that are uh, object to multiculturalism or at least bring the topic up and you say they're not called racist or not called bigots or not um, you know, censored or canceled, <laughs> you don't know what the hell you're talking about because guess what? You're one of the people that does it. Maybe you do it all the freaking time on your shows, on your interviews. You label people exactly that. And then when you're asking about where the hell the 2007 David Cameron went to, well, guess what? He found out that multiculturalism doesn't work. It sinks societies. It divides societies. It causes chaos within societies. And then the final point, basically, okay, in which you were talking about, in terms of just um, when he brings up, when Mehdi Hassan brings up, again, the point that Douglas brought up about underage British girls. Remember, these are British sovereign, you know, citizens. These are 16, 15, 14, 13, 12-year-old girls, underage girls. And he's saying, what society allows that? What government allows that? What culture does that? 
All right. Well, it's the Asian culture. It's a Pakistani culture. In some parts of the Indian culture, it's happening. So don't tell me, Mehdi, it's happening within the cultures. And what government allows it? The British government is allowing it. And when Douglas basically said that this was happening to a Protestant girl, a Catholic girl, a Christian girl, if this was happening to a white girl, the government would have stepped in and prosecuted that. Those people would have been sent to jail, those parents, or that father or uncle, whoever it was, or the person that got married. That would have been absolutely done. Why is this only happening within Western Europe and the Western democracies? You don't see the marriage of underage girls happening, um, you know, here in the United States of America. It's not happening here. Anyways, folks, let's continue with the debate. I've been very lucky. I've lived and worked all over the world. And um, Britain is by far, by far the most tolerant society I've ever come across. Okay. However... What I'm concerned about is that, I think uh, Douglas was right, what seems to happen is when something is said, there are minority groups of growing vocal um, ability who will find offence in whatever you say and find a channel to get that offence um, shouted about. And, and that, I think, is part of the problem we've got now. But the, the bottom line is we are an incredibly tolerant society. We should be very, very proud of that. Jackie Smith. Douglas Murray, do you want to come back on what Mehdi Hassan said? Well, look, I mean, both of the sort of left-wing people on the panel tonight, Mehdi and Jackie Smith, if you can still call Labour members left-wing, but it, both of them have done the same thing the left always does on this. You try to have a discussion about the failure of multiculturalism, and you have the BNP thrown in by Mehdi. They're told, uh, well, the BNP member congratulated him, at least concede maybe all sorts of crazy and horrible and disgusting people can jump on a bandwagon without meaning that it's the wrong thing to have said. It, they, maybe they're just opportunists. I suspect they are. And Jackie then throws in the example of, uh, 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 of, the, uh, of the EDL and thinks, do you really think, Jackie, that, that that was what David Cameron was aiming to do? I mean, a couple of, you know, hundred people well, marching in Luton does not mean the Prime Minister of Britain should not be making no, a speech about a very should... serious no, no, matter. No, I, I and this is the problem. The debate by the left is always attempted to be shut down by associating it with far-right extremist no, and racist groups no, instead no, of having no, a frank no, 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 no. discussion. I did not say that he shouldn't make the speech. And I said I thought the argument he made in the speech was right. And incidentally, it was a one, one that we had previously made. What I said was it would have been appropriate given that speech, to also say that when we're pr pr promoting shared British values against Islamist extremism, we should also do it against right And I think, I think you, can, you can belittle the idea of a couple of hundred extremists, but if you put yourself in the, in the shoes of a British Muslim in Luton or in other cities where the EDL have marched to live in fear of those groups, then I think they have a right for their Prime Minister not to go abroad to Germany and send them lectures from there on who isn't and isn't an extremist. Take a couple of points from our audience, and then we'll go on to another question. Uh, the Again, but not to belabor the point, but Douglas Murray comes back and says that any time anybody talks about multiculturalism, talks about racial issues, talks about, like here in the United States, about what's happening with the black community and absentee fatherism and, you know, all these different things that are happening within society, transgenderism issues, religious issues, uh, religious liberty, anytime you bring this up, the left always demonizes, always brings out the B word, the bigot, the R word, the racist. Now they're using the I word, insurrectionists, not an Islamophobia, you know, um, xenophobia, everything. You just, even if you're just thinking about it and you say, what about, what if racist, bigot, you know, Islamophobe, that phobe, this phobe, all of that thing happens. And then they attribute people of a particular group that nobody really likes, even if it's one person, and says, see, that guy, he liked it. So guess what? All of you paint everybody with one big, huge brush. Like they do that with David Duke all the time. If David Duke says something and says, oh, yeah, I agree with that guy, and it happens to be a Republican, oh, guess what? All Republicans, David Duke is behind you. You must all be white supremacists, all be you know, racist. But when David Duke did that to a couple of Democrats, key is thrown away in the lockbox, all right? And the mouths are just shut. Anyways, we appreciate you taking the time to watch. 
You've been watching the Dr. Nasser Shake Show. I've been your host, Dr. Nasser. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel if you like or comment. If you like our video and our content, check out our video links above and below. Share, like, and follow. You know how that helps us. I'll leave you with my final thought, which is when you're right, you're right. And when you're left, you're wrong. Until next time, folks, take care and stay safe.